In the last lecture, you learned about datetime, which represents an exact date and time value. We also have a type called time span, which represents a length of time. There are a few different ways to create a time span. The simplest one is to use the new operator. So, time span equals new time span. I note that the constructor has multiple overloads. In this case, I'm going to use the third one, which takes hours, minutes, and seconds. So let's say one hour, two minutes, and three seconds. What if we didn't have a value for minutes and seconds? We could just pass zero. So here is an example. One hour, zero minutes, zero seconds. The only issue here is when you look at this time span object, sometimes it's not quite clear what do these zeros represent. Is it the hours, minutes? It's not quite clear. So a more readable way to create the same time span object is used to static methods on the time span structure. So time span has a bunch of static methods, and they all start with from, from days, from hours, milliseconds, minutes seconds and ticks. So I can just use from hours and pass one here. And note that between these two lines, the second one is more readable. There is also a third way to create a time span. If you have two daytime objects and you subtract them, the result is a time span. So something like this. So end minus start returns a time span. In this case, that time span represents two minutes. Let's display it on the console. So here is the result. Two minutes, and it has a slight millisecond value. I think it's because of the datetime.now. So at the time that we read this value, there was a tiny millisecond component in the current day time. Okay, so this is all about creating time span objects. Now, once we have a time span object, we can read its properties very easily. So each time span has a number of properties that come in pairs. What do I mean by that? Look at this time span. It has properties like days, hours, milliseconds, minutes, seconds, and so on. But it also has pair properties that start with total. So total days, total hours, milliseconds, and so on. What is the difference? Let me show you with an example. So I'm going to duplicate this line. And this time, I'm going to display total minutes. So the minutes property returns the minutes component of your time span object. So in this case, our time span is here. The minutes component is 2. So that's what's returned from minutes. Total minutes converts that time span object to minutes. So in this case, it's going to return uh, one hour, which is 60 minutes, plus two minutes, plus three seconds, which is a fraction of a minute. So let's take a look at the result. So as you see, minutes is two, whereas total minutes is 62.05. Next, similar to the daytime object, the time span is immutable, which means once you create it, you cannot change it but it provides a couple of methods to modify its value, add and subtract. Both these methods return a new time span. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So what I'm gonna do is, this time I call the add method. Note that this method takes a parameter of type time span. So here I can create another time span. I can either use the new operator or I can use one of the static methods. So let's say time span 
from minutes. So I add eight minutes to our original time span. So it was one hour, two minutes and three seconds. So now it's going to be one hour, 10 minutes and three seconds. There you go. Subtract is very similar. So I duplicate this line, subtract. Again, this method takes a time span object. So let's subtract two minutes from our original time span. And the result should be one hour and three seconds. There you go, one hour and three seconds. Now, one last thing you need to know about time span is conversion to and from strings. So let's scroll down. If you want to convert a time span to a string, you simply call the toString method. But note that in this case, toString is grayed out. What does it mean? That means console.writeLine by default calls this method on any object you pass to it. So you don't have to explicitly call it. But if you're not using console.writeLine and you need to convert a time span, to a string value, simply call to a string. How about conversion from a string? We use the parse method. So, time span dot parse, that takes a string. So let's say one hour, two minutes, and three seconds. And that returns a time span object. In this case, we pass this time span object to console the right line. And this method automatically applies to string on our time span object. Let's take a look at the result. There you go. So parse, one hour, two minutes, and three seconds. That's pretty much all you need to know about time span. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and thank you for watching.